Do you find yourself feeling stressed out when you're studying for an important exam or when you're practicing repeatedly in front of a mirror before a presentation? It's perfectly normal to feel stressed out or anxious every now and then. Unfortunately, for some of us, our anxiety can get so out of hand that we feel this way constantly. That chronic feeling of anxiousness and fear is the marking of an anxiety disorder. Before we begin, we'd like to make a short disclaimer. Please don't use this video to self-diagnose. If you can relate to most of the signs, we do advise you to go to a qualified medical health professional for proper diagnosis. With that being said, Psych2Go presents to you the seven types of anxiety disorders. One, generalized anxiety disorder, also known as GAD. It's the most common among anxiety disorders to be diagnosed. People with GAD suffer from intense and persistent worry. A GAD sufferer can worry or feel anxious about a number of events, ranging from school or work to their family life at home. This anxiety is associated with at least three of these symptoms. Restlessness, fatigue, difficulty concentrating, irritability, muscle tension, insomnia, or difficulty falling asleep. People with GAD often can't explain their anxiety using specific fears, like those with more specific anxiety disorders can. And this is because their anxiety stems from various stimuli. Those who suffer from GAD can find relief in a number of treatment options, ranging from mindfulness meditation and brisk exercise to cognitive behavioral therapies and medications. Two, separation anxiety disorder. This type of anxiety is more common in children than adults. For many, the mere thought of separation causes a high amount of stress. People with separation anxiety worry that something unexpected could separate them from their attachment figure, or that their attachment figure will abandon them. And this anxiety presents as nightmares of being alone and a persistent refusal to leave their attachment figure. Kids with separation anxiety may be clingy and insist on sleeping with their parents at night. Children often grow out of separation anxiety disorder, but if it persists for six months or longer, they should be provided help. Adult sufferers may also find benefit from the available therapies. Three, social anxiety disorder, social phobia, and selective mutism. Social anxiety disorder, also known as SAD, refers to the fear of public situations and exposure to unfamiliar people. SAD sufferers tend to avoid situations in which they're in the spotlight because they're worried that they'll be embarrassed or judged by others. The thought or the anticipation alone of an upcoming social situation can cause major anxiety-related symptoms like panic attacks or severe stomach pain. People with SAD may show signs of stress in these forms. Little to no eye contact, freezing in place, running off, or avoiding tasks like eating in public. Children and adults alike can suffer from SAD, but some children with social anxiety may also have a more intense inability to function in social situations. Selective mutism is a type of social anxiety in which a child is unable to speak in social situations, despite being able to speak normally otherwise. Oftentimes, this problem arises at school or in the presence of strangers. If a child with selective mutism is able to communicate at all, they might only be able to nod or whisper. Four, panic disorder. It becomes a disorder when an individual experiences panic attacks multiple times in their lifetime. Panic attacks are intense bursts of fear followed by a range of physical symptoms. These include at least four of the following. Cold sweats, muscle stiffness or trembling, hyperventilation, which is fast, shallow breathing, lightheadedness, numbness, or the fear of death and or insanity. The fear afterward of another panic attack sometimes actually provokes more panic attacks. More often than not, panic attacks are had in combination with other anxiety disorders. Therapy, along with medications, can help in handling panic disorder. Five, agoraphobia. Does your local train station seem intimidating? Do you feel faint in a crowded place? Agoraphobia is the fear of public places. Anxiety arises because they deem them as too open or dangerous. It's triggered by fears like becoming a victim of crime or of contracting a disease or illness. Its sufferers coop themselves up in their homes where they're comfortable and familiar with their environment. Agoraphobes often become overdependent on other people to compensate for their inability to cope in public. Agoraphobia can develop at any age and can be extremely debilitating. Exposure therapy works effectively against agoraphobia in conjunction with medication. Six, specific phobia. 
These are persistent and extreme fears about a specific object or situation and cause a ton of stress to the sufferer. Phobias can be environmental, like acrophobia, the fear of heights, and they can be animal-based or even situational, like taphophobia, the fear of being buried alive. Such phobias often arise due to traumatic experiences that cause people to make negative associations with these objects or situations. Someone who was clawed in the face by a cat in their childhood might have an avid fear of cats in their adulthood. In cases where exposure therapy may not be safe or applicable, cognitive behavioral therapy can be effective in changing a person's negative association to their feared object or situation. 7. Obsessive Compulsive Disorder, OCD and post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD. Yes, OCD and PTSD were categorized by many psychiatrists as disorders to be grouped with the aforementioned anxiety disorders. Recently, there have been new findings about these disorders that deem them both unique enough to be in categories of their own. However, this is not to suggest that OCD and PTSD are any less important to deal with. The common thread that groups disorders like GAD, SAD, panic disorder, and phobias together is that sufferers of these anxiety disorders experience future-oriented fear. OCD differs in that though there is anxiety felt in the sufferer's obsession, they are able to find temporary relief in their ritualistic compulsions. Unfortunately, for OCD sufferers, this means a life of cyclical ritualism that can affect daily living. Those who suffer from PTSD may suffer anxiety-like symptoms similar to GAD or even panic disorder, but PTSD is unique and that it's past-oriented. The sufferer suffers flashbacks that bring them back to the event of their traumatization. If you're diagnosed with anxiety disorder, it's okay. Millions of people around the world understand what it's like to suffer from an anxiety disorder, so you're not alone. Understand that every single one of these anxiety types is often treatable and manageable. Also, if you know someone who may benefit from online counseling, we've partnered up with BetterHelp an affordable online counseling platform that you can utilize. They're constantly striving to improve their services and terms and conditions. The link will be in the description box. Did you find this video helpful? If so, remember to share this video with those you think might benefit from it. As always, thanks for watching.